If you have been watching my previous videos, you will know now that the decision has been made to purchase a Microsoft Surface RT as my next tablet of choice. So it's time to prepare for its arrival and to sum up what expectations I have of the device before I actually get to test it. First up, I've got to buy the thing, which is much more irritating than it should be in this day and age. For whatever reason, Microsoft have decided not to put the Surface RT on general retail release in the United Kingdom. So I can't waltz into a shop and buy one. And what makes this even more of an insult is that Microsoft is actually advertising this Surface RT on television in the United Kingdom. How many people do you think are wandering into town at the weekend inquiring about this thing and then being told it's only available online? And worse still, it's only available in two places on the internet. The Microsoft website itself and eBay. Now obviously eBay sellers are cashing in on this shortage of availability and with no competition around, prices are rigid with little hope of finding a bargain. Because of this, I would much prefer to walk into a shop and buy one because it would mean I would have it instantly in my hands and it's much easier to return in case of a faulty device. But I can't. Instead, I'm stuck rotating this tablet around in a funky 3D fashion, deciding whether or not to purchase one from the official store. And so for the past week or so, while I've been patiently waiting for someone to buy my Prime to free up cash to buy the Surface RT, its availability on the website has been fluctuating from in stock to out of stock to delivery time estimated three weeks and so on. This leaves me even more frustrated and apprehensive about ordering one from the website. The last thing I want to do is order one and then get stuck in some sort of delivery limbo for a few weeks. I'm a very impatient person, you see. But it seems that I have little choice in the matter. So what I'm going to do is buy one of the tablets from the website and this is the one I'm going to buy. A 32GB Surface RT with a black touch cover keyboard for £479. Suddenly the iPad mini doesn't seem that expensive. I will admit that that is somewhat of a boring choice but there are reasons for it. On the UK site there are three choices of colour for the keyboard, black, white and cyan if I pronounce that correctly. But choosing a different colour adds another £20 to the price, so shame on you Microsoft, I'm simply not going to do that, I'll get the black one. Secondly, there is an alternative keyboard called the Type Cover that includes a proper tactile keyboard with real keys that depress. Now, I have my reservations about the Touch Cover keyboard because it gives you no tactile feedback, but since I'll be reviewing this tablet as a new piece of technology, I might as well risk it and see what it's like. And the type cover would cost an extra £30 as well. So yeah, forget that idea as well. We'll go for the touch cover one. As for the other accessories, apparently the outrageously priced HDMI cable is the same as any other HDMI cable. So I'll try the one that I already have first. And for the time being at least, I have no intention to hook this up to a VGA monitor. So I won't be shelling out another outrageous amount of money for that cable either. So now the tablet has been ordered, and thankfully shipping is free, and quite bloody rightly too. Now I have to play the waiting game, and while I wait, what expectations should I be building up, and what should I be worrying about in terms of the Surface RT? Well, I'm going to keep this simple with a couple of bullet points. I'll make videos on all of these points when I have the thing actually in my hands. First up is the modern UI. It's a rubbish name since they lost the Metro, and I may end up just calling it Tiles, but I can't wait to get my fingers on what looks to be a glorious user interface. Second up is Desktop. After some research, I have discovered that there is a desktop within the tablet. Now, I'm not sure how functional the desktop is, and I don't know if I want to know any more about it at the moment. It just makes me feel a little warmer and safer inside knowing that there is a desktop. File management will certainly be a lot easier, and it should be a lot easier to copy and paste. But I'll get to find out all the particulars when I use the device myself. Next up, simple, HDMI. If there's one thing I loved about the Transformer Prime and really miss about the Nexus 7, it's HDMI. Now I'll get to use it again. And finally, web browsing. With the exception of Safari on the iPad, I find web browsing on tablets a bit of a chore because the browsers never match up to PC browsers. I'm hoping Surface RT readdresses this, even if it is Internet Explorer. I mean, are there any other browsers on Surface RT? I don't know. I guess I'll have to find out when I use one. It's all very exciting, isn't it? And there are, of course, other things I'm thinking about, but we'll leave these as the main positive pointers for now. 
So next, what am I worried about with the Surface RT? First of all, the Surface RT isn't a Windows laptop, but being a Windows device is going to make me think it is, and I think that that is going to be a very difficult tag to shake off. I can just imagine myself being in the middle of something and wanting to do a typical Windows thing, like maybe taking a screenshot and then editing it with a program like PicPic, but then suddenly realizing I can't or it's much more difficult to do because I'm using a tablet and we all know that tablets have huge limitations. The Surface RT tablet is more expensive than many Windows 8 laptops and yet it's going to be much less capable. It's going to have to really deliver in other ways to make it a good product for its price. I'm also very wary of a screen resolution. Tablets are now moving into what we might call a retina generation where individual pixels are indistinguishable. That's not going to be the case with the Surface RT. If you're not sure what I mean, try one of the new iPads with the Retina display and then use an iPad mini and you'll just notice how fuzzy stuff seems to be, especially text. The Surface may be a similar experience, but only exemplified because it's a large tablet. Next up is apps, or the severe lack of them. There are less than 10,000 currently available, and one thing I will be expecting is an almost infinite choice of Windows programs. For example, I would love to be able to use Audacity, Windows Movie Maker, Cam Studio, PicPic and so on. But the truth is, they are not going to be available, and will such productive apps ever be available for this Surface RT? It's a huge question that will be answered over the course of time, but for now, none of us really know if the Surface RT will ever be able to deliver. Finally, onto the touch cover. It offers no additional structural support and there are no hinges. That's the reason there's a kickstand actually on the tablet itself. This means that this thing won't actually sit on my lap properly, so it's not going to feel like a laptop, or at least I don't think it will. I don't know how I'm going to sit on a sofa or in bed and be able to type. It's going to feel like a tablet with a dead floppy weight on the end of it. Perhaps a difficult concept to explain, so I'll cover it in a video when I get the thing. And that's pretty much what this video is about, waiting to get the Surface RT. So stay tuned folks, it'll be here soon, and when it does, the fun begins. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon in another video.